what a lot of men don't know is that when you are not open and honest with your woman, you are creating problems for yourself. Because you are not going to know whether you have a wife or a knife. If I earn 500,000, I'm open to you that I earn 500. And you're asking for bone straight. It means you are not a straight woman. You are not the one for me. When I got married, you know, I found out that, you know, I, I, I knew a lot, but... <laughs> theory and practical. You know, theory and practical are two different things. People are sincerely in jail. People yeah. are sincerely poor. People are sincerely confused. Yep. Sincerity is not a factor of production. It's a relationship without trust. It's already dead, waiting for burial. You know, when you are 19 and you want to date a girl, you write poems. But when you get mature, you write checks. Many people cannot have side checks, not because they don't want. They can't afford it. <laughs>
But when you get matured, mm. you write checks. You don't, mm. you just, <laughs> even if you want to have an affair. You write checks. <laughs> you are going to write checks. You can't be telling a 31 year old girl that you are the ink of my car. Because mm. excuse me, you know, you have to show up, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, affair is a budget, mm. you know. And like Pastor Lumide said, when people learn the wisdom of, from the beginning, um, having understanding of the money that comes into the family, mm. and they have that understanding together, I believe very strongly that, you know, there should be one pulse in the family. Mm. And it will be difficult when everybody sees the money for somebody to write a check for a Porsche or for a house mm. or for to buy a business class ticket without seeing... You know. What's going on? So at mm. times, I've seen couples, I know 26 couples in a family um, excellence system who run this particular idea. Mm. And the fact is that you see that even when you are tempted, because I've spoken to these guys, even when you are tempted, you are close to a lady, you really want to go all the way, but you know money is going to follow this thing. <laughs> <laughs> and, you. and there's no way you are going to justify these expenses. Yeah. If you get away with it once, mm -hmm. By the second time, the third time, you are going to have to be explaining yourself. Oh, yeah. So mm -hmm. it's wise, um, it's safety, it's necessary restraint mm. to be able to, apart from a lot of other, you know, economic issues, yeah. why it's just wise to be able to put money and love together. They are inseparable, in my opinion. You gave a great idea on, you know, you know, having money together and obviously you can see. But see, in the Nigerian context, let's bring it home to Nigeria. Uh, a lot of women cannot see what their husband is doing with money. Sadly. Uh -huh. So <laughs> it doesn't have to explain to anybody but God. And one thing that I really want to bring light to is the issues and the ills that are happening today in Christian marriages. Mm. And this leads me to trust and transparency. Yeah, in finances, obviously. But Pastor Lumide, trust and transparency in Christian homes today has led to so many different ills. One of them, obviously, is finances. And if you could just please speak around that. I wrote a book years ago called Before You Say I Do. Mm. Um, it's a book that deals with, um, it's for both single and married people. So yeah. two books in one. The mm. first part is Vital Considerations for Singles Before You Say I Do. Mm. The second part is Wisdom for Couples After You Say I Do. Mm. And I came to realize that majority of the problems we have today is ineffective courtship. Hmm. People don't court effectively. So what they're supposed to deal with in courtship, they now try to rectify in marriage. And hmm. you cannot manufacture your weapons of war on the battlefield. Hmm. It doesn't work like that. So if you are courting effectively, you should not be going into marriage with someone you don't trust. Hmm. Because a relationship without trust is already dead, waiting for burial. Hmm. So when you are courting, you should know what each person is bringing to the table. Mm. So how much do you earn? What, those are the things you do in courtship. So how can you marry? And say, I don't know how much he earns. That means courtship has been wrong. Mm. You shouldn't be getting married to someone that you don't love or that you don't trust. Mm. So when it comes to the issue of um, relationship, once you are coming together in courtship, we sit down to discuss this marriage. Why are we getting married? Mm. What is the purpose of our marriage? What will be our values? What are our goals? What are the guiding principles that will guide this family. What are our dreams? Okay, how many children do we want to have? Where do we want to live? When do we want to own a home? What kind of children? You know, all those things are supposed to, when you are discussing that, mm -hmm. there is no way you will not find out whether, okay, if he earns 200 and you earn 150, that means the money coming into the family is not 200. Mm -hmm. It's 350. Yep. Mm -hmm. If 350 is coming into the family, you cannot plan to say you want to live in Banana Island. <laughs> you already know that that money cannot pay. So what a lot of men don't know is that when you are not open and honest with your woman, you are creating problem for yourself. Mm. Because you are not going to know whether you have a wife or a knife. If I earn 500,000, <laughs> if I earn 500,000, I'm open to you that I earn 500. Yes. And you're asking for bone straight. <laughs> it means you are not a straight woman. You are not mm. the one for me. Mm. Look for somebody else. Your, your <laughs> desire to have bone straight is not a problem. Mm. It only shows that I'm not qualified for that level. Yes. So you go and I will look for my level. Mm. So mm. once you are not honest with your spouse, you are just setting yourself up for trouble. Yeah. Because... Men, women and children have the tendency to see their man and father more than they really are. Every child believes the father is Superman. Mm -hmm. Every woman believes my husband can do everything. Hmm. So if you are not open and she's seen the details, she will think there's money somewhere. Hmm. No, my, my. And then when trouble comes, everybody is suffering for it. Hmm. And then to say something about the issue of um, having money together. Yeah. 
Um, one of the things that we have come to realize is that when you come into a relationship, not everybody has the same level of financial intelligence and financial discipline. Yes. So what we have said, which is a suggestion, because there is no one size fits all. Mm -hmm. Most of the times of this discussion are poverty discussion. Mm. Because if you are married to a multi-billionaire <laughs> that has 50 billion, all this joint account is all poverty <laughs> discussion. Somebody so if how much do you want to? So really, it's just because majority of the people are still at the struggling level. So we have to give them guiding principles. Yes. So I advise, which is what I've thought about the years, that every family should have four accounts. Mm. A suggestion. Number one, the husband should have his own personal account. The wife should have her own personal account. So that's two accounts. Mm -hmm. Because I personally believe that any relationship that robs you of your individuality is bondage. Correct. So you still need to be an individual. Point. A man yes. joins a woman. They become one family. Mm -hmm. That is on earth. When you get to heaven, it's not Mr. and Mrs. Mm -hmm. You still have to answer your own personal. Yes. So man, woman. Hmm. Come together. So that man should still be a man. Yes. I don't want I want to surprise you and I have to go and take money from the place where no no no. So there should still be then they should have a third account hmm. which is going to be like an expense account. Hmm. Now that expense account may work for some people, may not work for some people. Hmm. So the expense account is the account that deals with every expenditure that we run. Yeah. So it's okay, a percentage of your money goes in here. A percentage of mine goes in here, and that's what we used to run the family. Mm. Whosoever is responsible mm. for the running of the family manages that account. Yeah. Then we now have a fourth account. So let me. So that third account, some people don't do that. They just divide the chores. And say, okay, you know what? In this family, they, don't worry. Mm -hmm. You undo this rent one. and school fees. You Anything else, I'll handle. So that settles the third account. Mm. The fourth account is the joint account we are talking about. Mm. There must be an investment account. Mm. An account where two of you put a percentage of your income in and no one single person has, has the power to pull out money there except we sit down and discuss. Mm. So when you have that joint account, that is where you talk about home ownership. That's where you talk about maybe children's futures, this and that investment. When you have that account, it keeps two of you together yes. when it comes to some of these things. Because you see, there are many people that find it easy to walk away. Because nothing is joining us together. Yes. When you are thinking of the fact that we have 17 houses and I can't sell the house without <laughs> us sitting down together. When you are thinking of the fact that we have investment in this place where we have all signed, you will think again before mm. you begin to say, I'm yeah. going. But when you live separate lives, it's easy, it's easy to quickly detach and move on. Mm. So those are some of the dynamics that we need to look into. So um, I've been in ministry now 34 years. By October, I'll be celebrating. I don't know when this will air, but I'll be celebrating 35 years in ministry in October this year. Mm. And one of the things I've come to realize is that a lot of the things we're trying to set to in marriage, they should never have married in the first place. Mm. You know, the Bible says what God has joined together. Let no man put us on that. The yes. one that God didn't join. Oh. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> but once you have already married, you know, when you talk about the will of God, the mm. will of God is before you marry. Yes. Once you marry, it has become his will. Mm. Whoever you marry, you have to mm -hmm. face it. So he said that patience, endurance, or long suffering. Mm. You have to now <laughs> face it. So the best thing I would say to people is, before you say I do, think well. Mm, because there are sense. many people in marriage today that if they have an opportunity to do it over again, they, they won't wouldn't marry too. the same person, they <laughs> won't do it the same way. And that shows you that there are things they should have known yes. that they did not know. Wow. Maturity does not come with age. Mm -hmm. It comes with the ability to handle responsibility. Yes. Mm, fantastic. And, 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 and you know, also is... Culture is also corporate. Culture. Yeah. Culture mm. is also corporate because a lot of our assumptions about love, about marriage, about even social exchange, you know, are traditional. Yeah. yeah. You know, we've been told, you know, it's just normal. Even the woman is not expecting the man to be that transparent. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was going to just say that that culture part. <laughs> you know, it's so key. <laughs> yeah. It's not even expecting it. Yes. Meanwhile, it's necessary. Yeah. It is. But it's not trained like that. Hmm. You know, you see your dad and your mom, the way they function and all of that. But the assumptions under which they did what they did was different from yeah. the assumption of the modern day life and contemporary life that we know today. Yeah. Right? There's so much pressure, so much eyes. We have social media. We have 24-hour TV. We have the internet. A lot of things that allow us to see and monitor 
our own progress and that of others. Yeah. So pressure is intensified. The way we exchange in society on a daily basis is now more and more complex than ever before, yeah. right? The speed of change itself mm. with the information age is putting yeah. us under a lot of pressure. Yeah. So yesterday's wisdom is failing, you yeah. know, critically with yeah. today, you know, but culture is corporate on many levels. And, mm. and like you said, the education is so key, mm. you know, to even expand that, you know, I mentioned if a family excellence system, mm. you know, um, um, to even expand what Pastor Olumide said, you know, about, you know, how to keep those four accounts. Yeah. You know, we, we also counsel that people should spend their money in percentages. Yeah. Mm. Once you are not, you know, successful to that realm of more than enough, mm. like I said, because there's a level of prosperity where it doesn't matter again, you yeah. know, what you are keeping, mm -hmm. you are measuring percentages, you know, but... When you are still evolving, you are still pretty much middle class on many level. Mm. You know, um, you want to spend money in percentages, mm. like I said. So, and, and and what I always say is, come together and decide what percentage of your income goes into investment, mm. and what percentage of your income goes into utilities, mm. education, mm. benevolence account. Mm. You know, benevolence is that you are going to give in this world, yeah. as an African especially, <laughs> with our community and, you know, our culture of, of, of family, you're going to give. Yeah. You're going to give in church, you're going to give in your neighbor, you're going to support people. You, you just can't be giving. So you need to have a benevolence account. If it's 10% or 5% of your income mm. that goes into that account, it doesn't, whoever says God has told me to, that you should give, once the money is not in that account, yeah, I know God has not spoken it's to you. Nice <laughs> because it does not make a demand where it has not invested. Yes. If he wants me to give you money, he will put money in that account. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right? And so, and, and then, I also believe that the money, the account that people have individually, which is very key, the yes. individuality construct is very key, you know, they then take a percentage of the whole from that big joint account. Mm -hmm. We agree that this percentage goes to you, this goes to me, mm -hmm. this goes to utility, this mm -hmm. goes to benevolence, mm -hmm. right? This goes to education. Mm -hmm. So we want to attend a conference, we want to attend a seminar, we want to pay school fees, go to the education account. Mm -hmm. And then the money that goes to the individual is where you can do whatever. You can sell the whole money in a day. You yeah. can go buy 200 shoes mm -hmm. if you want. I have no say in that. Mm -hmm. But that is a percentage that we have both agreed to come to you. Mm -hmm. It's priceless. You know, the point that he has read is priceless. And I, I it, 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 it also goes beyond the limits of religion or faith. Yeah. Yeah. People of different opinions, views, ideas, Ideologies, faith, and religion can practice these things. It's mm. just wise. Mm. It allows, once you don't have more than enough, measurement becomes a necessity. Yeah. Yes. And measurement also allows behavior governance on many levels. Mm. So if we see all the money and we plan all the money, we're also controlling the attitude and the behavior on mm. many levels. Mm -hmm. Right? I actually wanted to speak to, so I have two questions now. One is culture. We spoke about culture. A lot of men believe that keeping stuff to themselves, being able to be the one to distribute um, if she knows everything I have, she will disrespect me. You know, this idea of uh, disrespect, because if you see, oh, my Remy Tom, she will see me finish. <laughs> and so I'm not going to let her know how much I'm getting. I will mm. distribute the money. Um, how do we speak to that? Because culture is a big part of behavior today. In fact, more people are cultural than Christian. Huh. <laughs> they use the, the word Christian to cover culture. Mm -hmm. So what we're seeing play out in marriages today is culture, what the, the male gender role is, what the female gender role is, and how everybody should walk within their, their parts to play. How can we speak to that? Well, we'll go back to what I said earlier on. Jesus Christ said, why transgress the law of God with your tradition? What kind of marriage are you running? So when you are running a traditional cultural marriage, then you are going to be a victim of the cultural beliefs and the cultural norms. So growing up, many of us were made to believe Oh, the man is a provider. They didn't tell us what he was to provide. Hmm. We just assumed that provision is equal to money. And that was the software running everybody. So the man comes, he's providing money, he's not giving vision. Hmm. He's providing money, he's not providing security. Hmm. He's providing money, he's not providing direction. Hmm. And you now realize that money cannot solve all the problems in hmm. the world. So the man is made to believe I'm a provider. Oh, go to school, get good grade, start to earn it so that you can take care of your family. So all he's thinking of is money. Hmm. All he's thinking of is how to take care of family. Hmm. All of a sudden, he believes that my expression of love is the ability to put a roof over your head hmm. and put food on your table yep. and clothes on your back. Hmm. I don't be, that's why you now see, I say, people, don't never marry an African man. Hmm. 
marry a kingdom man. Mm. Never marry an African woman, marry mm. a kingdom woman. Mm. Because when you are marrying an Afri- African man, you are marrying the culture he comes from. Yes, sir. And that culture will affect you. Mm. So to an African man, you say, like, hey, these guys are not romantic. Ah, oh, mom, I put the roof over your head. That's romance. <laughs> that's romance. <laughs> I put food on the table. That's romance. Because that's his, that's his upbringing. He doesn't understand a love language, Valentine, buy me flowers. Oh, so you see, we do a <laughs> He doesn't understand that because that's his culture. Hmm. And now his identity has been connected to his ability to provide. Hmm. So when a man is now not able to provide in a cultural marriage, he feels less than a man. Yes. So you now see the problem now as people are doing the japa, japa da, whatever. Yeah. So as they now go to the Western world, they now see a different context. Hmm. So the man that was a provider that believes that I'm a man because I pay rent, I pay this, I pay that. Now goes into the Western world. The woman is now any more. He hmm. now feels he's no more a man. Hmm. Why? Because what made him think he was a man was provision. Hmm. Now that he's not the major provider, he has lost his, man- his manhood. Wow. But in a kingdom marriage, you are not a man because of your ability to provide. Yes, sir. Because it's not money that makes you a man. Mm-hmm. God did not say, let us make man in our own image so that they can go and provide. Hmm. That's not the reason. So when you are in a kingdom marriage, you understand that this man that I'm coming... You see, there are a lot of people today that have money to take care of themselves. If money is all that the woman is looking for, then if she has money, she's supposed to have everything. True. Mm-hmm. But even though she has money, she's still looking for it. That means your presence in her life is more than the money that she has. Mm. So when you run a kingdom marriage, you will not have those cultural... Because those are, we go back to courtship. You will have sat down. Why are we coming together? Yeah. Why am I saying yes to you as a man? Mm. Then it will help us to settle a lot of all these things at the beginning. So culture is affecting us a lot. Mm. So when you come into the kingdom... We now have to start reteaching people mm. kingdom culture. Yeah. I did a series um, last year, part one to 25, the new rules of love. Mm. The game is the same, but the rules have changed. Mm. And even as pastors, there are many things we ourselves have taught mm. that we are reteaching now. Mm. Because we didn't know better. We are only teaching what we know based on our own interpretation. But yeah. as we're all growing, we are mm. knowing better. Because mm. see, life is lived forward but understood backward. Mm-hmm. That's why as you mature, you say, ah, if I knew what I know now, it means you are growing. Yes. So, and one of the things I dealt with in that is this issue of thought party. Hmm. And I never allow a thought party. And I say, come, this is an error. Hmm. How can you say this? Because in the same statement, where they say don't allow a thought party, in that same statement, they'll say a marriage is between a man, his wife, and God. Is God not a thought party? Yes. <laughs> so what they should be telling us is be careful mm. the kind of thought party you allow. Well, yes, be sir. intentional mm. about the case so that the thought party will be someone that is spiritual, matured, and experienced enough to help you. Mm. So for me, it's something that we all have to continue to rethink and reteach ourselves. Hmm. So when you are in a family, we come together. You, the, the reality you know is what you saw in your parents' life mm-hmm. and what you saw in your environment. But now, let's sit down together in courtship mm-hmm. to say this is how we want to run our family. Mm-hmm. And then we begin to, because that's what some of us have done that has helped us to be able to have a, a, you know, something better than yeah. what we grew okay. up in. Oh, thank you for that, sir. Um, I want to go back to the courtship statement. So it's been said, I think I read it on Instagram the other day, don't suffer with a man. When does he have? Don't suffer with because once he has money. In fact, there was this study they said, um, a man will marry the person that, you know, that he can, you know. But once he makes money, he will look for the one that he could not get to. <laughs> so therefore, don't suffer with him. And it speaks to, Marrying potential. Ah, and he has potential. I can see. He's not, he doesn't have money now. But I can see that if I help this man, as the helper that God has called me to be, you know, women are the helper. If I help him, he can make it. How do we balance, balance that statement? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it's, it's a reality. I mean, it's a reality. It's, it's something that has happened. It's, people, people are not imagining it. Hmm. It has happened yes. in many cases where... People were at a level of humility before they begin to um, gain capacity. And then they have financial capacity and then Men power everything sex. they they celebrated mm-hmm. is all of a sudden not enough. Mm-hmm. It's a poor man humble. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and the next level is they want to elevate to <laughs> a higher place. And mm. that means that they have to update everything around them, except that. Your wife is your wife, you you know. So, so for me, I think that it comes down to the person, you know. And I and I think that people should, 
you know, dimension all of it down to the guardedness in choosing who you want to be with. Because whether you like it or not, human beings are irrational. We are cons- no experience in the human condition is is permanent. There's transiency in everything we know. Mm. Everything we know, do, and even who we are is in a state of existence that is prevailing mm. in the today. Yeah. But then it's in a phase of development, which mm. is growth. Mm. And then it's in a season of usefulness. Mm. So, you know, when I was much younger, I, I used to defend if if my wife or anybody say to me that I've changed. You know, you've changed. I would say, no, I've not changed. But as I mature, I realized that I've changed, yeah. really. Yeah. A lot of things have changed about yeah. me. So I, I don't defend the fact that I've not, if I is wrong to say I've not changed, mm-hmm. that would have been a problem. Hmm. I have changed. I've I've gained more knowledge. Yeah. I've, I'm, I'm, I've changed my cycle of influence. My mm. people that I interact with, yeah. the, the knowledge that comes into me, mm. the way I interact, everything has changed. Mm. My consciousness of myself, even the knowledge of my own identity, mm. the knowledge of my journey mm. has continued to evolve. So mm. I will change. People will change. And change can be for good or for, or for worse, for the mm. better, you know, or for pain or misery. Pain can go, change can go in any direction. Mm. But part of what we have to know um, is the truth that, you know, the fact of our imperfection is a constant. Mm. And the human being that can supply perfect behavior has not been born, will never be born. Mm. (laughs) So part of our humility is to be able to live with the journey of imperfection. I say it every time, that if the Garden of Eden itself was perfect, the serpent would not be there. Mm. If if Adam was perfect, evil would have been unnecessary. Mm. If today was perfect, tomorrow would be unnecessary. Yeah. Yeah. So all flawedness is imperfect, but not all imperfect is flawed. Mm. There is a lot of our imperfection that is the gift of the future to preserve us from future weakness. Hmm. So today's error is a gift from the future to prevent you from bigger ones yeah. if we pay attention. Yeah. So whether we like it or not, human beings are going to evolve. So that should not be the problem hmm. because that's a constant and that is a fact of life. Yeah. The problem is that if people change, you know, essentially they are not kind. Hmm. You know, the Bible says that what is desired in a man is kindness, yeah. not a car, not a house. Hmm. Not a building, not land. It's mm. kindness. Yeah. So I say that you don't become a thief because you stole. Mm. <laughs> you steal because you are yeah. a thief. Mm. Such that if you never have the misfortune of stealing in your lifetime, you are not less a thief mm. if you are a thief, whatever made you a thief. Yeah. Mm. So I can't raise my voice on Pastor Lomide, mm. no matter what he says to me, mm. no matter how much it provokes me if I don't know how to raise my voice. Mm. If I know how to raise my voice, well, by whatever exposure, by whatever training, I will raise my voice. Mm. Now, somebody else will be provoked by the same thing he has done yeah. to me mm. because he doesn't know how to raise his voice. He will pick up his jacket and go for a walk. Or he'll lock into himself in the room and put up CNN mm. or something and raise the music because he doesn't know how to slap. Mm. So people get into government and they steal. You know, after making promises that they will not. The truth is that Pressure will put you in a state that reveals who you are. Yeah. Mm-hmm. What you do at any point in time is not because of what was done to you. It's a revelation of who you who are. You are mm-hmm. yeah. So when you slap people, you are a slapper. Bottom line, mm-hmm. you know you know how to slap. Whatever gives you that skill, you have the ability to slap. <laughs> you have mastered it, and so you slap. If you don't know how to slap, you will not slap, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. So if you put pressure on a thing, the content of the thing is revealed. Yep. If you squeeze a cockroach, Blood is not going to come up because it doesn't have blood. Mm. If you squeeze a car, metal, oil, water, gas, it's always going to come up. There will be no blood. Mm. Except there's a human being in it, mm. right? So every time we put pressure on a thing, the content of the thing is revealed. Yes, sir. And prosperity is pressure. People mm. don't know that. Yeah. Mm. When you gain capacity and more money comes into your life, it puts you under pressure. It mm. will reveal who you really are. Yeah. Yeah. And when you are that kind of guy that can discount the value of the things around you and you cannot give meaning and purpose to the instruments around you, both the human instruments and non-human instruments, Mm. and you cannot give purpose and meaning to them, you will disrespect your wife. You Mm. will, you know, ignore her. You will seek other type of satisfaction because Mm. essentially, you know, this is who you are. Mm. 
And this so-called prosperity is now revealing to you. You can be meeting yourself at, at first, that level for, for the, the first, first time. time. Yeah. Mm. And people are meeting you at that level for the first time. Mm. A lot of time, it's not even intentional. Yeah. You know, and that is why on many levels in that kind of picture, probably all parties are victims. Mm. Yeah. Victims of a lot of things. History, yeah. programs, you know, culture, yeah. so many things, mm. right? So the best thing is to have that conversation. Pastor Bimbo spoke about courtship and the time to ensure that, Pastor Bimbo used to say, courtship is for interview, not, not intercourse. intercourse. Yes. <laughs> right? So, you know, interview is key. Mm. But for some reason, they sell so much. I was you know, coordinated singular marriage with Pastor Bimbo, right? I traveled with her. I was everywhere. But for some reason, you know, humbly, I realized that there's just a gap mm. between what you know mm. and what you practice. Yes. Mm. You know, because when I got married, you know, I found out that, you know, I, I, I knew a lot, <laughs> but... <laughs> theory and practical. You know, theory and practical are two different things. Very. And I, I still had to... And so even if God speaks to you, even if you marry the best human being, even if you marry an angel, yeah. you know, the responsibility to show up, to show up emotionally, to show up with strength and mm. character. Mm. It's a constant demand. Mm. It doesn't matter what the foundation is. Mm. Even, even when you are sure it is God, it doesn't excuse you. I know God wants me to eat today. But if I don't go and cook the food, mm. I'm yeah. just going to die hungry. Yeah. So there's a responsibility that accompanies the voice of God. Mm. What God says is not a picture of what must happen. Mm. What God says is a picture of what can happen. Yeah. God giving you, receiving. God playing his part, you play your part. Mm. Then it will happen. And so the best of marriages suffer. And it's not because it wasn't God at times. At times it wasn't. It wasn't supposed to be. But even if it was supposed to be, if you don't apply ourselves at the level we should, mm. we will sincerely struggle. People are sincerely in jail. People yeah. are sincerely poor. <laughs> People are sincerely confused. Yep. Sincerity is not a factor of production. Mm. And it's not an independent experience, mm. right? We have to supply a level of clarity and intentionality mm. to the ideas we want to experience, regardless of the intent or whether God is with it or not, mm. right? And so I think people don't change. I think people are revealed. Mm. You know, people are revealed. And that is instruction. That is a curriculum. That feedback mm. from the future. The humility to accept that moment and seek, you know, improvement, mm. right? It's a different ball game. Yes. So I don't have a problem with knowing who my spouse is not and how she's growing. It is her, her capacity to take responsibility for that. Yeah. I don't, and I, 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 I have a lot of forgiveness for myself. Mm. I'm very tolerant of myself, mm. right? Because I'm not moved by the mistakes I make as I am moved by my willingness and maturity to learn from them, yeah. right? And I say to people that wisdom is important in marriage, mm. but I think the height of it will be the humility to take responsibility mm. because error is a constant. So the humility to own your experiences mm. and take responsibility for it is key mm. because most of us, we get into marriage on many levels with different assumptions, mm we then come together to begin to create some form of harmony. I don't believe in balance, but we'll, we'll leave that. So, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so um, the other side, let me, two things I want to just add. The other side of the courtship issue is what I teach called wellness check. Mm. Mm. Now that we are married, at least I believe that if it's just twice in a year, we should be able to sit down and ask ourselves, are we good? Mm. Mm. What am I doing that needs to change? Mm. That's what a good one. Because if you don't do that, a lot of people, we work on every other thing, but we don't work on ourselves. Correct. We just take each other for granted. We just assume that ah, we are together. And then you are shocked mm. when it was, ah, you mean you have this in your mind? Ah, yeah, but you've, there's never been an opportunity because to discuss it. See, when you are getting married, you are getting married to the past, the present, and the future of your mm. spouse. Yep. Some part of their past, you know. Mm. Some part of their present, you know. The future, you don't, don't know. know. So you must be ready to entertain strangers. Mm. Because strange manifestations, strange blessings will come in the mm. future mm -hmm. that you have no idea of. Mm -hmm. So the question we always need to ask ourselves is, as we are going into this relationship, am I ready to embrace whatever manifestation of glory or challenge comes with this person in mm -hmm. the future? Mm. That's why when the man, when you are marrying a man, I just want to bring this angle because having sat down in counseling room, there are, all that size that we need to look into. Oh, yeah. And I've sat down with guys, ah, but why are you doing this now? This lady helped you. She was there for you. I this ah, hmm? that is not really help. The help that they are giving you with insults, with dishonor, mm. 
and you had no option. You have to say, but now that I have option, hmm. it's my time to, to now show, show because <laughs> if I had option, I would like. So hmm. saying this now is to also help women. Yeah. When you are helping a man, hmm. which you call, and when you say helping, you see, it depends on the kind of marriage mm. we are running. In the kingdom marriage, we are it's our family. So it's not about you are helping somebody, I help you, you to pay school. Yourself. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. It's it's to get, so because of whatever. So when you are supporting a man, helping a man, the attitude with which you do it is a seed that will produce an harvest in the future. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So the fact that you are saying the truth does not mean you should say it anyhow. Mm. Speaking mm -hmm. the truth in love, that's mm -hmm. what kingdom. Yes. Common communication is all about. So when you are supporting someone and they are growing, don't stop growing. Mm. Because most of the time you are supporting the guy, the guy is going for masters, he's doing PhD, he's changing his dressing, grooming himself, and you are giving birth to first one, second one, third one. You are throwing your body mm -hmm. down. Go to school. I don't have time for that. Develop yourself. I'm not interested. Go and learn driving. Ah, the big driver is there. And let's mm. travel. I don't like code. Mm. So the guy is going high and you are just there. Mm. 15 years later, the guy is a global phenomenon and you're like a village woman. Mm. The guy now wants to be a governor. You are not presenting him. <laughs> Why? Because he was growing and yes. you are not growing. Mm. You were helping him to grow and you believe that that's enough. Mm. But it's not enough for you to still be the same person you are. Mm. You are supposed to also be growing so that the same way he's growing, you are growing and there's always something in you that continues to keep him yeah. and draw him. So that's Correct. another balance we need to look at because Correct. sometimes, like you said, I wanted to say that that most of these guys, they are also meeting themselves for the first time. Mm. Yes. Because, you see, I, keep, I like referring to my books. You know, yeah. In the School of Money, I wrote an entire chapter on the dangers of success. Mm. Because people don't know how dangerous success is. Mm. When you don't have, that's why I say, is a poor man humble? humble. <laughs> you don't know who is humble until there's money. Yes, sir. Every poor man, you have no choice. Poverty will humble you. Mm. But when you have money mm. and you are humble, that's when I will know you are really humble. Yeah. Because money gives you options. Mm. Many people cannot have side chick, not because they don't want. They, they can't, can't afford, afford it. it. <laughs> <laughs> when they can afford it, that's why you will know that there is side chick. Yes. <laughs> well. so, so, so the question is, are you doing what? So wellness check, very important. Yes, sir. Once you're married, twice in a year, some, we do that in our own family, twice in a year. And sometimes my wife will say something, and I'm like, oh, okay. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't know that. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I'll work on that. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll say something, say, hey, ah. I say, well, but if we don't have time to sit down, you're like, oh, I don't want to hurt him. I don't want to hurt him. You are sweeping everything under the carpet until the carpet is a mountain that everybody's tripping on. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I just want to digress. It's getting interesting in my mind. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know how you said that you, would, uh, you don't even know that person. You meet the person for the first time. There's a correlation between men and sex and meeting themselves for the first time. It seems like the more maybe successful they get, maybe they have other sexual desires. You see where the side chick comes in. So, for example, um, you would the Bible says the marriage bed is undefiled. Does that mean you should have a threesome? <laughs> you know, because in the world that we live in Correct. today, sex is put in your face even more Correct. than ever. Correct. Um, that even within the home, a lot of things are being tried. Uh, a man now makes more money. He's meeting himself for the first time. Maybe his sexual desires, he's not be able to ask for one or two or three or four. But now we can afford to do yes. A, B, C, D. Yes. So how do we talk about that within the Christian context? Now you're making money. Now you have all these sexuality. Your wife is not that person. How, how do we balance all of this out? Because in the last podcast I, I, I had, they said one of the reasons that men step out is sex, not being sexually fulfilled. You know, for me, it's a different ballgame. I, I usually say that, you know, I see some, there are so many things that they define men by that doesn't work for me. So for a long time, I, I, I questioned how to grow in the understanding that, you know, men step out because of sex, mm. you know, and I, I took my time to really read because there's a lot, there's a volume of knowledge yeah. about mm. that. And it's, it's not my reality, mm. you know, because as a, as a, they say men are spontaneous, you know, you just see, it doesn't work like that for me. Mm. You know, if I meet somebody, your, your, your level of intelligence, it's very important to how I relate with you sexually. Yes, mm -hmm. You know, I'm mm -hmm. sexual in that yeah. sense. You know, because if you, it doesn't matter how beautiful you are, I don't see it. What I what I see first is the quality of your thinking. Yeah. And if you don't communicate that, so I can't be with somebody I don't have a relationship with. Mm -hmm. You know, I have to have a relationship with you. We have to be communicating at a level. And, and I don't, it, it doesn't mean that we are even talking about ourselves. 
you know, it could be about United States, it could be about politics, yeah. Bin Laden, terrorism, it could be anything, but we have to be able to communicate, right? And so for a very long time, I used to think something is wrong with me. You know, why, why, you know, men say these things, you know, I don't just feel these things. So, mm. but I began to meet other men and I realized that also oh, this thing is true on many levels, mm. on many levels is not, mm. right? But the fact is that if a man steps out, you know, he hides under the idea that, you know, it's a shield for him mm -hmm. that he's not having good sex, mm -hmm. you know. And so he goes out. Science is already clear that the idea of enough sex is a myth. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't eliminate contentment from any human experience that you are going to have. Mm -hmm. People tell me that, you know, I just can't be with one woman. For the rest of my life, <laughs> but and you have one. Christians, so that's what yes. you are yeah, Christians. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but then you've been with one barber for the last twenty-one years. <laughs> one mechanic, you know. <laughs> you have only one mechanic for the past twenty-six years. Mm. You have only driven a BMW mm. in all your eight cars. You mm. cannot see yourself driving. That's fidelity, mm. you know. So when we, it's selective reasoning. Yeah. When we begin to choose the platforms that experience the release of our virtue, hmm. right? Because you understand fidelity. You hmm. understand it. That is why you are loyal to a brand hmm. all your life. You are loyal to a, a place of, of your grooming. Hmm. You will drive two hours. You will, you know, just to go. You are loyal to a restaurant. Hmm. You know, you will, you will inconvenience yourself to come hmm. to that restaurant. Truck, they used to, they, we used to have this rice in my hometown, in Ikena, in Ogun State, called Ayamashe rice. Oh, yeah, Ayamashe. Hmm. You know, you originated from my hometown, right? And people will send their driver from Lagos mm. to go to Ikene to go buy that rice <laughs> in Ogun State from Lagos, from VI, from Ikoi. It's incredible, mm. right? That's loyalty. Mm. That's fidelity. Yeah. You know, that's advocacy itself, you know, on many levels. <laughs> so, <laughs> so when you look at it, I find it very, it's just shallow excuse yeah. to uh -huh. say that. And I tell women, listen. You, there's nothing they say oh go and get this type of string white string mm -hmm. this string get this type of now, bra mm -hmm. you know get this to tame your man I said look the dog that wants to be lost will not hear yeah. the hunter's yeah. reason yeah. it doesn't yeah. matter how much on that way you go and pack mm -hmm. blah, 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 blah. Yeah. a fool will find his way out if yeah. that's his resolve yeah. yeah you know so I I don't I, I empathize with whatever the reality of the man is mm. that is taking him out mm. but i refuse to underscore the fact that it is the wife in any way mm. that is responsible for that mm. yes, you know i recognize the facts but i can't i can't accept responsibility that is because of what the woman is doing or not doing mm. that is necessitating that mm. right because there are so many other problems you have mm. you don't go up you don't say because you are poor you want to go get a gun and go rob a bank yeah you, you don't do that you yeah. find creative ways within the boundaries of legality yeah. to solve that problem. Yeah. And that's how we solve most of our problems. Mm. It is the one that is pleasurable, mm. that, you know, ministers to our nuisance, mm. you know, and gives wings to our whims and caprices mm. that we activate in the name of the irresponsibility of the other person. Yeah. Mm. Okay, so um, let me bring some. Number one, like you said, I'm not someone that supports any form of stereotype. Because most of the time, there are no data to, to support some of these things. For many years, people say, oh, men cheat, all men are dog. And I'm, sometimes like, I'm like, ah. in fact, I sit down and say, guys, you get side cheek. I ask, I say, I say ah, but this thing when they talk, it's like, are we mad? Is there something wrong with us? Because it's not our reality. So I don't believe in those so oh, men cheat, all men, this, all men. That is a, is a software that has been put in us. And we attract what we believe mm. at the end of the day. Yes, so all men don't cheat. All mm. men don't cheat. And if you say all men, who cheats more? If you say men cheat more, who are they cheating with? <laughs> women. <laughs> They're cheating with women. <laughs> you know, so you, you, the hypocrisy of our world, mm. you know, is so amazing. Oh, it's, it's just amazing. Mm. So I want us to deal with some deep issues that lead to some of these things so that we can understand. Number one, when we don't do things the way the creator wants it done, mm. these are the results. Mm. According to the plan of God, you are supposed to get married without any sexual experience yep. to someone that has no sexual experience. Mm. So your first sexual experience is supposed to be with the person 
you are yoked with as one flesh. Yep. So whatever you find there is your reality. Mm. There is nothing else to compare it with. Mm. So what you are saying is a two minutes man who defines what because you have never been. There is the, even is two minutes. That two minutes is your two hours yes. Yes. because that's your reality. <laughs> yes. So the root cause beginning from there is the fact that yeah. many of us have messed up. Mm. So by the time you are now getting married, you are on the bed with the your spouse, but there are sixteen other people in that bed, mm. and you are comparing the kiss. The mourning, the mm. romance, the way to that of this mm. one and this one. And mm. then dissatisfaction starts from that point. Mm. And then there is no communication. Mm. There is no discussion. So mm. you have desires and fantasies that you are not communicating. Mm. And it's becoming a problem. Because if you say that, say, ah, mom, what happened now? I will have done. I love this one. I, 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 can't, I can't do that. Or we can't do this. Do, there will be discussion. There's no yeah. discussion. Mm. So number one, that's error of not doing it God's way is number one. Number two, when you now get married, we need to understand your mind is the sexual organ, hmm. not your penis or your vagina. It's hmm. your mind. Hmm. And once you get married, if you don't renew your mind, hmm. if you don't deal with your mind, you will get into trouble. Yep. No matter, let the woman give you 10 a day. Hmm. As long as everything you are seeing is sending a different signal to your mind, Correct. your curiosity will be looking for expression. Hmm. So it's very, very important for us to always make sure that we realize that, look, it's your mind. If an 80-year-old woman is naked, hmm. it doesn't move you. Dogs don't wear clothes. Hmm. Animals don't wear clothes. Hmm. Why are you not seduced by their nakedness? Hmm. It's because your mind tells you there's nothing there. Mm -hmm. But when you see a young woman voluptuous, your body is moving. Why? It's because your mind tells you there's something there to explore. Yep. So we should work on our mind. And women should please not put themselves under that unnecessary pressure, pressure hmm. of taking responsibility for an irresponsible man. Hmm. A man that is not responsible is not responsible. responsible. It's not your fault. Hmm. If you like, give him everything... Oh, the chandelier turn around turn, is a lie. <laughs> he will do whatever he wants to do. He will look for one reason why what you are doing is still not enough. Mm. Just make sure that there is constant communication and then you are expressing what you can express and what you cannot express, you are discussing and you are always on the same page. Once that is done, play your part and don't allow somebody to put you in bondage. Mm. Wow. Thank you for that. There was one question that wasn't answered. The marriage bed not being on the felt. Because now, like yes. I said, Pastor unfortunately, in the world we live in today, most people are very sexually active before they get married, as yeah. we know. Yeah. <laughs> Their sexual appetite is on another level. <laughs> um, but when they marry, they want to marry somebody nobody has touched. They want a virgin. But with the experience of. Uh -huh. <laughs> somebody that has not that experience. And in fact, I think the culture even celebrates that men are more experienced than women. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then you now get married and she's not meeting that your sexual appetite. Um, and then I had people ask, but the Bible say marriage bed is on the fire. I said, the Bible say you invite another person to the bed. Because three some. <laughs> it's crazy. It's true because they say, okay, marriage bed is on the fire. They're that means... They're already inviting somebody else in their marriage. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I, I would like us to just talk about the realities of today um, in terms of sexual compatibility and really and truly, I think how money play, comes into play is Men feel, okay, now I have enough money to experience or maybe these younger girls are more available or more willing. But the one you married, you married that because nobody has touched her. Yes. <laughs> I, if I can hear the guy once say, oh, my wife is for the normal one. My wife is for the normal, that one is normal. I don't want to add no. When I go out, I can do everything else. <laughs> so I'm just talking to the realities of, of the truth of marriage today. It's just carnality and deception. That's yeah. just it. That's because it. you see, if you don't have what you love, love what you have. Hmm. The grass is not greener on the other side. If you water it, it will... So whatever you want to go and explore, sit down with your spouse and express your desires, your longings. And most of the time, you will find that those desires and longings mm. are not inspired. Mm. They are influenced. They are influenced, <laughs> yes. Because I say to people, if you have ever had sex before, this mm. thing is sweet. Mm. And the person that created it is the creator, the most holy God yes. that created this sweet thing. He tells you how sweet he wants your life to be. Hmm. So he doesn't hate you. He doesn't want you to be sad. Yeah. He made it in such a way that rich or poor, you don't even need money. Everything fits into each other. Yeah. That tells you the mind of God. So you are not unholy hmm. to be engaging in it when you are married. Yeah. So whatever discussion you want to have, you now begin to ask yourself, is this the way God wants it to be? Hmm. Because if you're able to discover, because one of the things that has happened is 
by virtue of religion, I say that religion is more dangerous than the devil. Hmm. Religion has done more harm yeah. in many people's life. And so I say to people, Christianity is not a religion. Hmm. It's a relationship with your creator. Yeah. When you practice Christianity as a religion, you are going to be a pawn in the hand of charlatans. You are going to be a victim of the religious, cultural, traditional, inexposed interpretation of scriptures hmm. of the people you listen to. So many people grew up with Holiness, don't let a man touch you. So even when they are getting married, no marital counseling, mm. no sexual counseling. So they enter and they are saying, let us pray before this sin we're about to commit. <laughs> God forgive us. So when you are entering married with that kind of mindset, yeah. and so people have come and tell you, oh, aura is right, aura is wrong. People are now trying to legislate morality, hmm. legislate what happens in people's privacy. Hmm. It becomes an issue. Yeah. Before marriage, I go back to court. Yes. Yeah you will have sat down and discussed. There are tests to run. Hmm. There are a lot of psychometrics and personality tests that are existing now. If you do marriage counseling the way it's supposed to be done, when we run you through all this thing, all this compatibility you are talking about, mm -hmm. things will have been sorted out mm -hmm. and there is nothing that cannot be learned mm -hmm. once two of you are willing to learn together. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that's the way this thing works because, um, ah, I don't know. You see... God has taken me through a journey in my life. Mm. Mm. And it has made me to, you know, when the Bible says, when you are converted, strengthen your brethren. Mm. Mm. I think there are some things that you go through that's yeah. what you learn. Mm -hmm. Those that I've never gone through will not comprehend. Mm. I am married now to someone that I married as a virgin. Mm. So I can tell you from two different dimensions mm. that most of this thing we are talking about we are just being carnal and unrealistic. Hmm. When I got married, I could not have sex for the first six weeks of the marriage. Hmm. Why? She's a virgin. Me, I thought I was experienced, but I've <laughs> never married a virgin before. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm like, this experience, if I mess up, it might become something that will go on forever. Yep. So even though everybody was thinking honeymoon was going on, nothing was a mefa, man of God. Was wow. a mefa. Wow. We were just trying, okay. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> so now, when we sit down, we are talking. It's two different conversations. I yes. said, look, don't see me as anybody experienced. I don't have any experience. Yes. I'm also a veggie. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a, so, I don't have a, so I'm seeing the difference now. There is nothing to compare anything Correct. to. Correct. Yes. Correct. Do you understand now? Because, so I'm like, wow. this. Is the, so it, I'm the one that now has to work on myself. Yes. yes. My wife doesn't have that problem. Hmm. She doesn't even understand. So when it's like, I'm like, ah, this God is great. So it is a revelation to me Correct. of yeah. the beauty of purity. Correct. Mm. That, mm. ah, they know about she really mm. Mm. But this is my lifestyle. Yes. You know, all my journey <laughs> has messed me journey. up Distortion. to a level where I have to be. And this person is just plain. And mm. I'm telling you, it's a different bugger. Let's do it God's will. I'm yes. Telling you. Yes. Yeah. And, and, and the idea mm. of the marriage being marriage bed being undefiled mm. To is the marriage bed mm. and the marriage between two people. Yeah. So as long as those two people, not three, mm. not four, mm. at, as long as it's the marriage bed, mm. the marriage defines only two people. Yes. Yeah. So as long as it is those two people in mm. their bedroom, mm. whatever they do mm. is undefiled, mm. right? Agreeing to what they will do yeah. is what the issue is. Yeah. yeah. Whatever they do is on different. Whatever way they want to express themselves sexually, yeah. mm -hmm. as long as it's between husband and wife, yeah. there is no sin in that. Yeah. But agreeing on what that should be, based on, like Pastor Lumide said, two different contexts from two different experiences yeah. has brought different assumptions, mm. right? So they, they have to be able to sit down, yeah. you know, and understand their level of exposure, mm. <laughs> you mm. know. Because yeah. their level of exposure, I, I, don't, I don't mean positive exposure to whatever you're not supposed to know mm -hmm. that you have come to know, mm -hmm. you have to create some type of harmony, yeah. you know, within that gap of understanding. Again, you know, um, I, 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 the fact of pornography is also very key. Mm. And science is clear that if you, when you indulge in pornography, masturbation, it completely messes up with your mentality mm. on many levels, mm. both physiologically Mentally, emotionally, mm. on many levels, yeah. right? Your ability to think clearly, um, to maintain drive and energy, mm. you know, um, all of those things are taken away from you. You cannot keep strong focus mm. when you indulge in 
pornography and masturbation. You can't, no matter who you are, because mm. your brain is learning a different neural path yeah. and is sticking to it. Mm. And you can't love a woman. You fall in love with your hand because that's yeah. what you use. Yeah. You know, so once you indulge in that, you are breaking your, your resonance yeah. with somebody else, right? Yeah. With your spouse. So, you know, a lot of, you see, it's a shameful thing. People are not proud to say, oh, ah, I watch pornography or oh, I masturbate. Yeah. You know, but there is nobody that is going to perform at a level, you know, and keep a habit like that. Yeah. You yeah. know, because it's small, it defeats you on many levels. Uh, you know, we can analyze that tomorrow to be fact, you know. So the the commitment to understand that you are married to someone goes beyond, you know, what you do physically, mm. even what you do, you know, um, um, in your mind, like like Pastor Olimide said, is your mind. That's yeah. your sex organ, mm -hmm. sexual organ. You know what you do in your mind. You know, being being able to sleep with five, ten, twenty women watching pornography <laughs> and That's getting, okay. you know, uh, uh, to uh, to climax based on that and. You know, de deriving your your satisfaction based on that, mm. it pretty much means that you have training every part of you mm. yeah. in variety, mm. and so fidelity becomes a, pro a, yeah. a problem on yes. a daily basis. But because mm. we don't communicate that, we don't talk about that. It's not on the conversation at all. Mm. They then come together and begin to pick other issues yeah. as the issues that they have. Mm. You know, when it comes when when I look at pornography, it's the same way I look at money and communication. Mm. We don't identify those things as the problem. So we pick other issues to represent those mm -hmm. problems. So we never solve the problem mm -hmm. because the real issues we are not discussing at all. Mm -hmm. And for the most part, when people begin to have challenges with their marriages sexually, for the most part, I found out that there's so many people are struggling with pornography. Mm -hmm. So many people are, but it's never going to come to the front burner of conversation, yeah. you know, except somebody is bold to really engage them, mm. you know, and, and that is not a, a rule to say this is what happens every time, but mm. a lot of times, you know, when you, when you get down to it, people get locked away from their spouse because they're dealing with somebody, something else in private that is giving them all the, all the connection. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of other things, disrespect, you know, um, can shut down a man. Mm. Mm -hmm. Disrespect, just, because he really can't communicate his highest esteem in his own house. Mm. Yeah. A part of him can be broken from mm. that. Mm. And when he looks at you, he doesn't see, you know, that object for pleasure and meaning. Mm. He sees an adversary. Yeah. Mm. Unfortunately, this is his home. Mm. He can't respond to an adversary, to his wife, like he would respond to an adversary. So the only response is to shut down. Mm. That shutdown is safety mode. Yeah. Mm. Because if you if it goes beyond that, it's war. Yeah. You know, and, and it doesn't want to get there. So it shuts down and it begins to shut down. <laughs> you know, and it, it happens to, to, to women as well. Yeah. You know, you you push a woman to a point, you know, and she gets to that point, she just shuts down. Yep. Mm. You know, and then it takes the grace of God, you know, some form of intervention, definitely counseling therapy to push out of that revelation or some kind of epiphany to push push out of that. But mm. these things happen. And wow. just speaking about respect, <laughs> you see that word respect, um, a man is in a home and he's not the main provider. The woman is, not that yeah. she wants to be disrespectful. Maybe she just has a better job. She has more money and she stepped into that shoe of being the sole or the main provider as per money. How do you, um, how do men handle that? Because I think in today's world, we're seeing that it's beginning to break a lot of marriages because a man cannot handle <clears throat> the fact that he's not in that seat of being the main provider. Okay, we'll go back again. Mm -hmm. Cultural, traditional marriage, mm. contemporary marriage or kingdom marriage. Mm. As a woman, you don't have money. You want to do something. You ask me as your man, oh, I would like to get this. I would like to get that. Yeah. Oh, I want to travel. Uh, can I travel next week? I'm thinking of going to... You ask me. Why are you asking me? You claim that you are asking because you are submissive. But you are not really submissive. You are asking because you can't afford it. 
Now you are a woman, you can afford it. You are no more asking me. I just come home, I see four bags. How was that? I just went to do shopping, I bought it, I bought that. Oh, wow. Hmm. So you can just do anything now, I'm no more relevant. Hmm. You want to travel, you are not even telling me, hey, I didn't remember, I'm going to London today, but I've already prepared food and... Oh, wow, you're going to London today. Oh, wow. So because you can afford the ticket now. Yeah. That's, those are the issues. Mm. It's not about the money. Hmm. It's not about whether you earn more or not. It's about the attitude yeah. mm, mm, mm. with which you go about it. Because, you see, a man can spend money from January to December hmm. without complaining. Hmm. In the traditional and contemporary marriage. Yeah. Not kingdom. But a woman spends just once or twice. The world will not laugh. <laughs> it's like, eh, I don't know everything so expensive now. I'm already, I say, ah. And you are like, but I've been doing this thing. I paid rent for 17 years. You pay for one year because I'm in crisis. And that one year, the world will end. Eh, even rent. But I've been paying for 17 years. I've never said anything. I just do it because it's like, why is it that you are doing it? Well, I've been paying school fees. Now dollar has changed. You have made myself, babe, I need $10,000. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah, hello, is it not our children? <laughs> so most of the time, why there are some men that have an ego issue, there are some men that are insecure, that cannot handle a strong woman, Correct. that's the reality. Sometimes, most of the time, a lot of women don't realize that when you are in a traditional cultural marriage, mm. a man's manhood mm. is connected to two things, sex, bedroom, and money. Mm. In a traditional marriage, mm. in a cultural marriage. Mm. So once the man cannot perform, he has erectile dysfunction, he can't do, you are talking two minutes, hey, have you finished? You don't come. Is that, mm. You are finishing the man. Mm. Yeah. Because that is who, then he can't, he doesn't have money. Hey, so are you going to pay this one? Are you going to borrow money again? You are finishing the man. Mm. Because in a traditional cultural marriage, that is who he is. Mm. Ability to perform, mm. ability to perform, mm. money and bedroom. Mm. So once you are in a traditional marriage, Anything you do, when a man does not have money, everything is interpreted financially. Mm. You are sitting now watching a movie. The man is sitting next to you. Everybody is laughing and enjoying. And then they show a beautiful house, a palatial mansion. And you say, wow, when will I have this kind of house? Trouble. Mm. <laughs> That's it. Why? Because when you make that kind of expression. Now, are we saying you should be in body, you should not be free? No. But you should be conscious of your environment and who you are dealing with. Mm. If you are in a kingdom marriage, it's a different ball game. Mm. Because in a kingdom marriage, the couples are friends. Yes. In a cultural marriage, they are not friends. Mm. The one is boss, the other one is subset. But in a kingdom marriage, we are friends. Mm. Instead of saying what they say, I'm on, ah, I'm on. You don't call them and you relate you. Ah, ah, my baby. <laughs> <laughs> Check out the bedroom here. Ah, my share pan. You know, you'll be gisting and laughing. Mm. It won't be like, hey. They have said this. She will mess. See people. Huh? God, do we will I have this kind of house? The man will just shrink mm. because what you have just said is you're not a man. Yeah, mm. You can't provide, but you thought you were watching movie, mm. and then the man changes, and then the next thing, are you ready for food? No, I'm okay. I want to quickly go and see John. He leaves. So we just need to understand mm. what kind of marriage are we running, mm. and then have constant conversation mm. so that we will not be putting ourselves because this world. Oh, you have just one life to live. Yeah. If you live it where one is enough, mm -hmm. well, everybody deserves to be loved. We don't have the, all this unnecessary stress. Yeah. I was still telling my wife yesterday, I said, ah, thank God though, for good marriage, that the stress of marriage for some people, I'm like, too little. Oh, mm -hmm. Why can't we be happy? Mm. Hey, you know, so, so, I don't know, but God will help us. <laughs> <laughs> Give us global perspective. <laughs> you know, I, 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 think, I think Pastor Lumide is right. Yeah. Respect is a, is a need of the human condition. You know, both husband and wife need respect. Yes. Right? The human being deserves the respect his or individuality requires. Yeah. Respect is a need, you know, and people try to minimize it. They, they want to slap ego on it. They want to... But, Respect is a need, right? Mm. For men, it's slightly different, particularly in a type of society where a lot of responsibility is placed on the man, existentially. Mm. And it's not it's not placed on him by God, mm. but society places it on him. Yes. And the woman too allows that placement. Mm. You know, so you allow the placement. For example, if you say that, you know, the husband is the provider, 
and the husband's money is our money and your money is your money, for example, where we started from, you know, if you accept that, you know, then it, there is, that is already placing another demand on you. You have to then begin to honor that man as mm. your source. And when the man begins to feel justified and therefore, you know, vexed when he doesn't get that level of honor, none of it is natural because ideally the money of the husband is our money. Mm. Your money is our money. Mm. But if you allow him to say you are the provider, if you don't provide, you are not a man. Mm. Okay, so if I'm providing that I am the man, yeah. so you must give me, you know, a level of respect that is not ordinary. Mm. I yeah. demand it because he doesn't know, but yeah. in his, from his subconscious, he's making that demand because you are permitting that demand and you are making that demand of him, yeah. right? So it's like two dead bodies trying to enter one coffin mm -hmm. and fighting for who has a big up space. Mm -hmm. You know, you are both dead. You know, it's just wrong. Yeah. You know, people just have to learn to understand the mutuality and, you know, of the human condition mm. in, in, in measuring coexistence, peace. All those things are not fabrics that you can sustain for too long on your own. Mm. Mm. You know, we are not in an independent world, mm. right? So no matter who you are, no matter how powerful you are, you don't get to become a chain, you are a link. Mm. And so you can't be everything on your own. And the way I put it is that, you know, the best of you is always in you, mm. but the completion of you it's always in others. Oh, as long as you are in your room talking to God alone or doing whatever you are, you are enough. Mm. But if you are going to organize one project, mm. you are going to have to hire a PA, mm. get a staff, you have to cooperate with people. Yeah. Then there's a completion in that mm. that is not in you and you'll have to depend on other people. Mm. And that should bring a level of humility out of all of us mm. to learn to tolerate each other. I try as much as I can to see respect as something that I deserve and that I owe. Mm. you know, not just what I deserve. Mm. So everywhere I find myself, doesn't matter if I'm talking to my chauffeur mm. or to my assistant, I strive to be better. I'm not perfect in these mm. things. Nobody is. Mm. But the truth is I strive to measure my right to respect with my duty to give it, mm. you know, and not to rest on any of the two extremes, mm. you know. So I'm asking for it. I'm also asking myself, am I giving it? Mm. You know, but do we deserve respect as human beings? We do. Yeah. Do men deserve more respect in our type of society, in a traditional situation, yeah. mm -hmm. even in a contemporary situation? Yes, mm -hmm. because society demands yeah. more responsibility. So at much that responsibility. Level. Mm -hmm. So um, the only way to get out of that pedestal is when all of us come to that same level of duality and equality mm -hmm. to understand that we all have a responsibility to show up financially in a home, mm -hmm. right? We both have the responsibility to show up emotionally in a home. Mm -hmm. We both have the responsibility to show up mentally, you know, in a home. Mm -hmm. And we come together to say, what is your contribution? What is mine? Mm -hmm. What am I bringing into this marriage, into this situation? Whatever need that we have, we come together to say, how are we going to resolve this? Particularly how we resolve conflict. Because mm -hmm. that's another issue. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, if you don't learn how to resolve conflict, mm -hmm. you really will be helpless in the face of the smallest of challenges. Yep. Mm -hmm. Because the, the instrument that you will use, it's like when you are not wise, once you don't have wisdom, how do you even love God? Mm -hmm. How do you even obey God mm -hmm. when you don't have wisdom as a principal thing? Mm -hmm. So if you don't first understand how to disagree to agree, mm -hmm. if we don't, if you can't agree on that, <laughs> on our most honest day, we're going to mm -hmm. have a crisis. Mm -hmm. Because we will disagree in this world. Mm -hmm. Because we are two different people. My mom is 80 something now. We still have sharp disagreements. After 50, I'm 53, we still have sharp disagreements. My siblings, we've lived together for, for 50 years, for 40 years. We still have sharp disagreements. How do I bring a lady into my home 21 years ago and I'm shocked, or 22 years ago, that we're having an issue? <laughs> You're going to have issues. Of course. You have issues with your mom, you have issues with your dad, mm -hmm. right? So the top skill that we need is our capacity to resolve conflicts because mm. conflict is a constant, mm. you know. So even in mar marital counseling, I always say that. Above all, teach them how to love, teach them how to <laughs> do all of that, but 
they must learn mm. how to resolve conflict. Yes. Conflict resolution. Because it's key. it's key. Because no matter how anointed you are, mm. no matter how humble you are, mm. you are going to be conflicted. Yeah. Mm. It is mm. inevitable that offense will come. Oh, yeah. Right? So, if it is sure, then what kind of person ought we to be? Right? So, yeah. Oh, so good. Yeah. So, I'm going to start rounding up now. We mm. said something that kind of jumped up in my, in my mind. Equality mm. in marriage. Um, and I'd like us to talk about that a little bit because we know the whole submission. Um, we live in Nigeria, which is quite cultural. We know what the society dem demands. Um, when you say the word equality, can you expand a bit on it too? Because one thing I really want this podcast to do is to also teach people and let them understand how things can be better um, and how we can work together in a kingdom marriage. Yes. Okay. So now we need to have clear understanding. A man and a woman before God is equal in value. Yes. Equal in essence. Mm. A man is not better than a woman. Mm. A woman is not better than a man. Mm. We are equal before God and we are different. Yeah. But now when you now get into marriage, Marriage is an institution, and every institution requires structure, system, and order. Yep. The church is an organism and an organization. Mm. As an organism, it's spiritual, it's supernatural, mm. but as an organization, we have to have a head of the organization. Mm. We have to have different people functioning within the organization. Yep. We have to have tenets, policies, mm. governing that organization. Mm. In a marriage, it is an institution. Mm. They are asked to be a head, a mm. coordinator. Mm. So in marriage, man and woman are not equal. Mm. In a kingdom marriage, the man is given the responsibility mm. to lead and guide that ship. Yeah. Not because he is better than a woman, but because two people cannot drive a car with only one steering. Mm -hmm. So in the same place where everybody is talking about your love, submit. It started with submitting yourself one mm -hmm. to another. That's where it started from. Mm -hmm. To say, look, we are all equal. That in this world, there are times you need to submit to the woman. There are times the woman needs to, but when you come into marriage, it now says, husband, do this, wife, do that. It didn't say man. Mm. It said husband. Mm. It didn't say woman. It said wife. Mm. So a woman is not supposed to submit to every man. Yeah. Is supposed to sub, she's supposed to submit to the man that she has chosen mm. to say, I honor you and I want to be your wife. I accept your proposal. That is within the confines of right now. That does not now mean that every decision in the marriage must be made by the man. Mm. A man that is wise now knows I didn't marry a dummy. Mm. She's bringing something to the table and I need what she's bringing. So if I'm married to an accountant, my wife is an accountant, mm. My wife is technologically advanced. I'm not into all those things. So even in the house, babe, mm -hmm. how do you do this thing? She will now say, ah, ah you yeah, do this one, press this one. And then, then that's submission. I'm yeah. submitting to her. Mm -hmm. In accounting, I say, ah, babe, yeah, what's this? Let me do this balance. That's it. So if you are married to a chief judge, mm -hmm. a legal luminary, mm -hmm. you now say, I'm the man. Uh, and the woman is saying, look, before you sign that contract, on it. Let me see so that I can look at it. What do you mean? I can't show you the contract. You are not a lawyer, sir. <laughs> I am the head. I am the I am the head. I am the head. It's not that. All. So many times it's because people are not well taught. Mm. So a lot of women, when they hear submission, what they hear is subjugation. Mm. What they hear is inferiority. Mm. What they hear is control. But God didn't say that. Mm. Whether they taught you that, but that's not what the Bible is saying. Mm. But two heads can. So in a marriage, where the submission issue really comes on is when there is now a decision where we have contrary views, mm. that is where, they, because most of the time, if you are married to the right kind of person, most of your decisions may most likely be, but when it comes to decisions where I want us to go, no, I think we should go this way, that's where there's problem. You can't tell me where to go. Am I, am I, there? I have my life, I have my this, I have my that, I'm a human being. You cannot control me, the trouble comes mm. because we have not learned how to manage crisis and how to manage situations. So, Every woman should know to say you are submitting to a man. No, you are not submitting to you are submitting to your husband. Mm. But many women find it easy to submit to their pastor. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. that does not have any, you know, submit to their boss in the office. Mm -hmm. So your boss in the office will talk, yes, sir. Even though you don't like it, you don't frown, True. you don't murmur, mm -hmm. you don't talk back, you don't give attitude because they are paying you 350000 Your pastor, bless you, sir. Daddy, you are, you are bending neck, bending body, <laughs> bending fake. But the man that is committed to your destiny, mm -hmm. He doesn't deserve that same honor. That's why a lot of men don't go to church. Mm. God, I go and marry your pastor. If he's your pastor, everything, my pastor, my pastor, my pastor. <laughs> if women can just give one tenth mm. of the honor they give their pastor and their bosses to their husband, a lot of things will work. Mm. So once you understand the context, it's 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 gonna make things easier for everybody. Mm. And you know, from another angle, you can also define equality in a very interesting way. Mm. And I consider it a more, I like when Pastor, Pastor Lumide spoke about contemporary marriage because we are, we are now living in our modern contemporary life. Mm. Contemporary is contemporary is now on a daily basis. It's everyday issues of contemporary life that yeah. we are facing. And so if you, if you start with God himself, you look at the concept of the Trinity, mm. you know, God is... This God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. It's equality. Mm. But there is difference mm. in role playing. Mm. And you see God the Son saying God the Father, taking approval mm. from God the Father. Yep. But there is equality in mm. that relationship. Yeah. It's three in one. None is superior to the other. Yeah. But you see a lot of difference yeah. in how the relationship works. Mm. And that difference is not based on subjugation or tokenism, mm. yeah. you know, or piety of any kind. It's based on role playing. Mm. The role of the son, the father cannot play. Mm. The role of the Holy Spirit, the son cannot play yep. and the father cannot play. Mm. Now, they are not taking those roles because of themselves. Mm. Because they said, let us create man. So they didn't have a problem with themselves. Mm. But with the human beings, the external factors that will experience them, Mm -hmm. They had to model a structure yeah. for the world outside of them. Mm -hmm. It's not for the world inside of them. Mm -hmm. It's for the world outside of them mm -hmm. that their role playing became important. Mm -hmm. They are not playing those roles to themselves. The Holy Spirit doesn't help God the Father. Mm -hmm. The Son doesn't help God the Father. Mm -hmm. The whole ministry of the Son is for the world, mm -hmm. right? It's not for himself. Mm -hmm. So we have to be able to live in that duality mm -hmm. to understand that there is an essence that defines you internally. And there is an assignment that defines you externally. Mm. And so once you understand that, you can live peacefully in your equality with other instruments around you mm. and lean into your role. The Bible did not say two cannot work together except they are similar. Mm. It said two cannot work together except they agree. Mm. Agreement runs the world. Mm. Yeah. And two fools, you see, this room is working right now with this podcast because of agreement. Yeah. Mm. We are all different people. Yeah. But agreement gives everybody his role, mm. gives everybody their posture, their yep. positioning, and everything is working perfectly. Mm. And there is incredible harmony in this room mm. because of agreement, not similarity. Yeah. Mm. And so when we come into the home as well, you know, we, 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 we have to find the strength mm. to live in equality. Mm. We have to, mm. as human beings. Mm. It, it, it's impossible to negotiate power. Mm without that, you know, harmony. Yeah. See, the Yorubas have issues, the Igbos have issues, and mm -hmm. because when you come to it, the Aousas have issues, because we are seeking superiority, yep. mm -hmm. right? If we negotiate that from a position of equality, mm -hmm. we can birth a different type of society. Yes. That's what is happening in America. Mm -hmm. There's no reward for being Texan mm -hmm. or from coming from New York. Mm -hmm. There's only reward for being an American. Yes. Mm -hmm. That is why two brothers from the same home same father, same mother. One can be governor in Texas, another one governor in Florida. Mm. They are both from the same from, from the same home. It can never happen in Nigeria mm. because the, the Americans don't reward indigenization. Mm. They reward the American. Mm. Mm. So an Igbo man cannot be governor in Lagos State and the governor cannot be. I mean, it's not important. Except it's a military rule. Mm -hmm. It's impossible. You have to come from there first before you can lead them, mm -hmm. right? Because we cannot negotiate from a position of equality. Mm. And so when it comes to the home, you know, I believe that we have to deliberately lean into equality 
so that we can honor difference. Yeah. Now, role playing is key. It has nothing to do with your with your equality. You know, you can't play equal roles. Mm -hmm. All of us cannot be the hand. Mm -hmm. Everybody, the body cannot be the leg. So who will be the brain? Who will be the eyes? Who will be? It's about role playing. Yeah. So what we do when we try to strike an hierarchical structure mm -hmm. out of equality, mm -hmm. it's like trying to seek which body organ mm -hmm. is more mm -hmm. superior. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the eyes, the, you tell me what you will do when mm -hmm. your eyes is not there, or when you cut one finger off, mm -hmm. right? So at the base of our coexistence, necessarily, there is an equality we have to assume. Yeah. Whether we know it or not, we have to assume it yeah. so that it can lead us to our difference, mm. right? So you come to, you see two partners in the business world, six people, four people have a business. Each of them have 25%, 25%, 25 25 but they can't have four CEOs. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And they are both in the company. Yeah. Mm. So somebody has to come amongst equal partners yeah. to be the chief executive. Yes. And the remaining two will be on the board. One will be ED. Mm. You know? And then they will have to function in that bracket. Mm -hmm. And then after 10 years or 15 years, the next CEO comes in. If he's still old enough, I'm too old. Get the younger CEO to come in. Yeah. You know? And that institution will work based on the constitution. Mm. Right? So the oldest person doesn't pastor a church necessarily. Mm. The oldest person doesn't pastor, doesn't lead a country mm. necessarily. So we have to defeat those walls, you know, those brackets of superiority, mm. right? We have to focus on our necessary equality as human beings and our necessary function mm. in role playing. Mm. That role playing is not because of us necessarily. It's because we are going to engage a world. Mm. And in that world, doesn't matter, we can be eating each other in the house. No, the no, way no. people see us, the way they relate with us, if I see Pastor Lumide now, there's a level of respect I must give him. Yes. Pastor Lumide is a senior pastor of an entire congregation. Mm. Whether I like it or not, if Pastor Lumide is 15 years old, mm. there is a honor that must come from me yeah. in the protection of the office he occupies. Mm. Otherwise, people who relate with him will disrespect him yes. based on that. Mm. If we come into this room, you know, and myself and PT are just, you know, talking to Pastor Lubi there anyhow, mm. hitting his head, you know, saying, ah, well, it's only, before we finish this podcast, one of these guys here will misbehave and say something <laughs> to him, <laughs> right? The strength we are showing with him mm. is not just for us. Mm. It's also as an example for those who are com coming in contact with him. Mm. So what I really believe is that equality is distinct. Equality is distinct away from function. Mm. And we have to be able to allow that equality. It's not a conversation. We are equal in that sense, right? Because we are human beings. Yeah. You know, and you can't, you can't, because if you, if we begin to find, like Pastor Lubide said, the way God sees us is the way we have to see ourselves. Mm. As he is, so we are yes. in this world, yes. right? So we have to see ourselves that way, you know. But in function, in role playing, the CEO of a bank mm. is the CEO, is the head of the bank. Mm. But it's not giving the responsibility to bring all the money. Mm. Salespeople do that. Marketers do that. Mm. It's not giving the responsibility to talk about the business the most. Mm. He has PR and communications and comms who, who would do that. Yes. It's not giving the responsibility to defend the organization in court. He has a legal team who will do that. But his job as head is to make sure that every resource available in this bank is functioning maximally yes. and is releasing its highest potential. Mm -hmm. So when I understand headship, I shift away from hierarchy mm -hmm. or superiority. Mm -hmm. I shift to, you know, uh, coexistence and maximization yes. of capacity. Yes. So as the head of a home, it is my job to make sure that this woman has her highest yes. experience yes. and is sharing her best self with the world. Mm -hmm. no, no matter how... There's no way you can negotiate that way. You can't say the woman is rude. That's why mm. you cannot do that. Mm. You are supposed to manage that rudeness. Yeah. That's why you are the head. Yes. You will manage, manage it and make sure that she's producing yes. at that level. Mm -hmm. Oh, she insults me. She's all of that. Then you are failing at this job. Yeah. Because this is, a, this is not a staff you can fire. Mm. This is a perpetual role. So <laughs> as if it's a staff, you can say you are disturbing me. Go. Mm. But in marriage, person has come, you have to... It's a, it's a demand, yeah, on, your mm. a demand mm. on your wisdom. groom. Groom her. It's a demand on your wisdom. And when we have that as the common denominator, hmm. we can negotiate better on how we progress as a couple, hmm. right? We can, you know. So, yeah, yeah. And I agree with, with Pastor Lubide totally on, because I get the point and I don't want people to misunderstand that. Yeah. The idea that God sees us that way, right? The equality that Pastor, the, 
the, that the man is equal, that's what he's talking about, is pretty much about the role that we play. Yes. So when the Bible says that the man is the head of the woman, it's not a title. Hmm. It's a demonstrative experience. Hmm. It's the head of the woman. So how do you do that? You love the woman hmm. as Christ loved the church. Yes. yes. Because Christ loved the church is speaking to the head of the church. Mm -hmm. You're right? And the, when, when the woman, and the, when the husband, when the wife is supposed to submit to the man, you submit to the man, not just on your terms, mm -hmm. not just on your preference, mm -hmm. but as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. You know, so the woman should please just focus on playing that role. Yeah. Submitting to the man as unto the Lord. Mm -hmm. The woman, the man should just focus on that role. Mm -hmm. Loving the, mm -hmm. the wife as Christ loved the church. Yep. I don't think any man should complain that you are not submitting to me. <laughs> I think your your you should any the man should be busy focusing on loving the woman. Loving. Yes. I don't think the woman should complain that the the, uh, the man does not love me. Mm -hmm. I think the woman should be busy focus on Submit. submitting to the man. Mm -hmm. Your job is to submit to the man. The man's job is to love you. Mm -hmm. Now, when you are loving somebody, you don't love me on your terms. Mm -hmm. You don't give me a gift that you like. Mm. You give me a gift I like. Yeah. So to love me, to really truly love me, you have to invest in my head. You have to rent a space in my head. Mm. You have to live in my head to know the things I like. Mm. And then you, like somebody gave me a gift the other day. I called the person, I hugged him. I said, you know, I won't use it. <laughs> <laughs> you, 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 this shows that, first of all, there's a level of... You, low intelligence here because mm -hmm. I have assistants, I have so many people you can call to find yes. out that I have four of these books, four. Mm -hmm. So how do you give me the fifth book? I have four of it from me, wrong giving of so many people. <laughs> so you have joined that list. I said, so you can't do that. You have to do some research to know what I like. Yes. Giving is acceptable on the terms of the recipient, yeah. not the terms of the giver. True. So when you want to love, for God so loved the world that he gave, so you have to then come and give based on my terms. Mm. And if you get busy on that, I don't know. It will be rare. I know it's possible in the irrationality of the human condition. Uh, but mm. it will be rare for a man to be giving to a woman on the terms of the woman uh, and the man will not submit. And the woman will not is, submit. Uh, yeah. right? And vice versa. Yes. If a woman is busy honoring the man and submitting and olori me my love, the love of my life, and giving him all the attention and all of the respect that he deserves, it will be difficult to find a man mm -hmm. that will not love that woman, mm -hmm. right? So I think it's about role playing. And I think both, I mean, the couple, each of them should, each, the husband and the wife should get busy mm -hmm. focusing on that role mm -hmm. and they will get the collective result that they should get. Man. Wow. 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 <laughs> it's been such an amazing, amazing time. I want to especially thank you, Pastor Lumide. Thank mm. you, Pastor Kunle. I've had a lot of fun listening to both of you speak such wisdom. Um, and I know that this session is going to really bless a lot of people. So from the bottom of my heart, I want to say thank you for honoring my invitation. And thank you for coming. And thank, thank you all for watching. Truth thank Table. You. God bless you. Bye.